once I have removed all four of the bolts on the small cover, it comes off and there's actually no gasket there. It's an O-ring and it sits down in a groove on that cover in there. This is a good place to put your bolts when you have it off. The clutch plates can be serviced just by removing the small cover. If you want to work on any farther in on the clutch basket or anything like that, you'll need to take off the larger cover, which includes the water pump. So we have the six bolts that hold this pressure plate onto the clutch pack. On the 125-160 models from the 1990s, there's only four bolts in a square pattern. These two would not be in there. And you, you can't leave two bolts out on the bigger engines. The clutch just will slip in high gears and rapidly wear out. But on the little 125s and 160s, they'll, they don't make enough power to slip the clutch at high speed. So they work well with only the four bolts. And they have a lighter pull to the clutch for the younger riders. Now pulling it straight off over the kickstart shaft, you want to push on the shaft at the same time so you don't pull it out of the inside of the engine and it comes off just like that. There's a paper gasket. This is the water pump gear. When you're reassembling the engine you have to either use the kickstart pedal to turn over the engine lightly or you need to take the cover off the water pump and rotate the impeller as you're putting the cover on because you want this gear to match with the gear that it drives on. You can break this plastic water pump gear if you try to force it without rotating it as you put the cover on so that the two gears align. There's no index mark or anything. It doesn't matter what position this gear or that gear is in. You don't have to worry. None of that applies as in automotives where you have two dots on two gears to put together. None of that is in this, in this situation. Okay, so I'm taking out the six clutch bolts. I'm using an uh, electric tool you can do that to take them out, but you should put them in by hand because if you over tighten these, you can break them off. Okay, so there is a specification of free length on this, plus or minus, but these clutch springs last a long time. What is important is that you line them all up on something very flat and that they're all the same length. If they vary too much, they can side load your clutch pack a little bit and cause your clutch to vibrate when you're slipping it. So you have the spring, a washer, a, a special washer, and the bolt. Now we're going to take off this pressure plate and you can use a little screwdriver just to kind of get up underneath the edge of it, get it loose. And um, it, it has a, some teeth, some gear teeth, and it meshes. Now. I'm going to come closer to the camera here and show you something. On this pressure plate, above one of the holes is a small mark. It's a cast-in line, okay? It's right there. On all of these older engines, that cast-in line must align with the one post on, on this clutch that has a hatch mark drawn across it and that's right here. This post has a little mark it's right there across the face of it. The other ones are perfectly flat. This post with that mark aligns with that line. So if you're putting back together the line over this hole means that hole goes on that post. That's pretty much it on parts that need to be put together correctly and what that does is that aligns the teeth on this inner hub with the machine teeth on that pressure plate. Now we have this little piece that looks like a valve for a four-stroke engine and it's what pushes out on the pressure plate to release it and there's a small ball bearing there and then there is a push rod going on through to the slave cylinder the hydraulic cylinder on the other side of the engine. This is the clutch push rod, the one that's on the left side or sprocket side of the engine. It goes into the clutch slave. It is 139.5 millimeters plus or minus two tenths of one millimeter. Early in the 1990s, people were lengthening and shortening these push rods, home experiments. It, 
has no effect on the way your clutch works. The, the slave cylinder that's hydraulic pushes the rods and opens the clutch. If the rod is shorter or longer, it still moves the same distance. So all you can do is properly adjust your clutch. The lengths of these rods need to be exactly correct. And there is the ball. I'm going to show a photo. And then the other pusher piece that I explained previously. The ball is five millimeters in diameter. Be certain that it's in there between the two push rods. So don't lose the little ball that's in there. So the clutch plates just come out. The whole pack you can take out like this. And you want to keep them in order. It's not critical, but it's a good idea. So we have fibers and metals, but there's one special plate and it's the one that's innermost and it's called the mixed disc and it's different than the other ones. It looks just like a metal plate, but it has fiber on one side. This is the one that would be most commonly failed on a, a really old clutch. You want to check it to see that the material is still bonded. Now this is a nice looking clutch actually. What can happen on these old bikes is if your clutch, when you take it out, if the material has come loose from the metal, the fiber, and if there's rust, then probably you have a bad water pump seal that's pouring water into your oil. And you may have seen water in your oil. And I want to speak about oil quickly. The reason we don't use synthetic oil, we never recommend synthetic oil, is there's several reasons. One is it's too sticky and it causes the clutch to drag. You just need to use normal motor oil. Using the normal motor oil, 5W30, the clutch will work perfect and you won't have problems with dragging. So checking every single one of the fibers to be sure that the material is bonded to the plate, you will inspect your clutch. And then we also have the clutch dimensions for the whole clutch pack width. When you're checking to see if your clutch plate set is correct, you want to grip it tightly and measure it with your caliper. And 26.3, 26.5, 26.9 millimeters in that range. You may find that when you take a used one out to measure it, it may measure a little more, 26.9 or something. And that's because the oil saturates the fiber discs and causes them to expand slightly. This clutch I'm holding in my hand is a new one, so it measures 26.35 millimeters. Beginning in the 1997 model year, there are seven fiber discs, the one mixed disc. And the older clutch, 1996 and earlier, only has six fiber discs. So, two reasons why we don't recommend you try to change just your fiber discs. One is if you buy a set of fiber discs from the aftermarket, they may be for the six disc clutch or they may be for the seven disc clutch and you have a six disc clutch. Why can you just not take one out? The thing is, is the six fiber disc and seven fiber disc clutch, they're both exactly the same total pack width, so that means that on the seven disc clutch, which has one more metal plate and one more fiber plate, all of the plates are a little bit thinner to make that total pack width correct. So if you put the wrong thickness of fiber plates in there, aftermarket ones, you simply, it won't work. The other reason that we don't recommend just replacing the fibers, and this is from many years of experience, is because the metal discs under extreme heat, they can get warped. So if you put new fibers in and you reuse your metals and they're warped, your clutch is not going to perform as well as you had expected and you'll wonder why all these new parts don't work. The way to check metal discs when you're going to reuse your existing clutch, you just have it out to check on it. You really need a surface plate. We here have a, a machined piece of granite that's for scientific checking for flatness and you just put it on the flat surface plate and tap on it and if it's warped at all it'll click it'll rock on that surface a surface plate some people use a piece of glass but it has to be a pretty good piece of glass so that's why we say when you're replacing the clutch you should put the whole thing in a complete genuine part 
on the earlier models, there is a flat washer that folds over to lock the nut. On the later models, they have this cone here in the center of the hub, and that aligns with the center of the pressure plate. Inside this pressure plate is a small bearing. It usually lasts forever, but be aware it needs to be in there and in position. So on the later model of the old engine, they machined inside here, and then this, this ring is, in, is mounted in here under this big lock nut, and that stabilizes this plate so that it doesn't wiggle. At the very high levels of competition in the World Championship, they discovered that when the riders were slipping the clutch at high revolutions, there was some vibration, and that dampened that, and that's why that's there. When you're reassembling, if you've had this big nut loose, you have to leave the nut a little bit loose, and then put this plate on, remembering the little mark alignment, put it on, you don't have to put the bolts in, and then very carefully take it off, and then tighten the nut, because this bushing has to be perfectly centered in relation to this plate. Now, how, how do I get this nut loose? Well, if you have an impact wrench for the socket to take it off, yeah, that's okay. But the hub spins. And you say, how do I hold the hub? Well, I made a tool from old metal clutch plates. And it goes in there and sits on there and like that. And then you can hold this hub while you tighten the nut or loosen the nut. This is the best way. I'm going to show you the wrong way. The only reason we ever sell this inside hub is because people are trying to remove it and they're trying to figure out how to hold it. And they put a screwdriver in here like this against the posts. And then when they hit it with the impact, it breaks the posts off. And, well, that's why we sell those occasionally. So this is not the way to do it. Alternatively, you can actually put the clutch plates in and they cause additional drag on the part so that if you're using an impact, it comes out. Okay, so I'm going to take off the center nut on the clutch hub here. You can see here this bushing and then the nut, it goes inside it. Okay, so it comes off and there is a washer right there. I like to put things together on the workbench so I remember the way that they came apart. Lay the pieces all out that way. Works good. Okay, so this clutch hub just lifts off there. And there is a washer, a thick one on the back that sits against a bearing on the transmission shaft. And then there is a bushing in the center and two needle bearings. There we have that. And this can just stay together. So there's our clutch basket. Sometimes on really old bikes with lots of hours, there is some wear inside the edges of the basket where the fiber discs impact that and if that's not too bad don't worry about it if you have if, you, if it bothers you you can take a file and just lightly burnish that it's not real critical when it gets really worn the fiber plates it's possible they can kind of hang up on those little divots that are in there now if you are going to want to take off this big nut here on the primary drive this is the crankshaft well how do I get that loose okay Before you were, would remove the clutch basket, the nut turns the normal way. There's no left-handed threads here. So we're going to rotate this nut this way. So you simply take a shop towel and you just put it here between these two gears. And just let it pull itself in there. Then you can get that nut loose. And then the same goes for tightening it there. As the rag is drawn into the gears, it tightens that up and then you can give the nut a good tightening. To summarize, we don't recommend that you use an aftermarket clutch. 
We recommend that you do replace all the fibers and metals as a complete assembly. If you're going to replace the clutch, do it right. We do not recommend synthetic oil in the transmission for any reason. Only 5W30 standard motor oil, castor oil, pins oil. This, again, I want to remind you, is not the pro engine. This would be the addition models up through 2003, the Pamperas, and all of the trials models previous to 2002. This goes back into the 1980s. And I want to remind you as well, if you've got this apart, work on that water pump at the same time. Make that right. You've got these pieces off. Put some new parts in the water pump, a shaft and a seal. Get that up to 100%. And then you won't have any problems. After all this about the clutch itself, I have to tell you that there are really three things that make a clutch operate perfectly, so I, I need to cover the other two quickly. One is the slave cylinder on the side of the engine. Basically, it is good or it's bad. There's a rebuild kit or you replace the whole thing when it's worn out. It's not a commonly worn part, but on an older engine, it's possible that may go bad. Typically, when that fails, you have hydraulic fluid from the system leaking out through the O-rings around the piston, or it can have some wear in the bore causing that piston to hang up or drag. That's a pretty simple part, but the master cylinder, the controller on the handlebar, that's a different thing. It has two adjustments. One is on the front here that adjusts the position of the lever in or out. Some people who have smaller hands, they want to move the lever in, or for a youth rider, that's all right, except that when you do that, you have to remember that there is an adjustment that sets the the lever to the piston which moves the fluid and that's the one on the lever itself with the small 10 millimeter nut. I'll move in here and see if we can show that a little better. Okay, I'm going to follow this with a still shot showing that there is a circlip, a small clip inside the bore of this master cylinder and that piston, that hydraulic piston has a, a ridge on it and that piston must always come out and touch that circlip. That ridge stops against that circlip and that's the outermost position of the piston itself. It has to come out that far. So if you set the lever in, you're pushing the piston in part way. And why does it have to come out that far? Two reasons. One is so that it can open the feeder hole in the reservoir here so more fluid can enter the system. That feeder hole opens to fill the system only when the piston is fully out to its outermost position against the circlip. The other reason is if you are using only part of your piston travel, your clutch won't completely open. The piston needs to go through one complete stroke to move the correct amount of fluid through the hose to the slave to push the pins, the push rods, which open the clutch. If you don't have a full stroke of the piston, your clutch will definitely drag. Thank you for watching my video.